<laughs> yeah, my father is a very humor. Yeah. Uh, he has a lot of dairy farmers' humor. Yeah. And uh, um, so he keep on writing letters to my mom. Says, you come to China. Come on, China is going through a great upheaval. And if you come in late, you're going to miss the bus. This is the farm where Fred's father, Erwin Inks, stayed and worked in the suburbs of the capital, Beijing. As an American, his first impressions about China came from a book. So my father read the Red Star over China and I was really excited about it. The young farmer came to China as a member of the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Agency in 1946. My father took a photo. My father had a, a color photo when he, when he came to China. He took a many roll of slides. He served as an expert on farm equipment in Yan'an, a legendary site of the Chinese Revolution. Well, uh, without the Chinese Revolution, you won't see me today. I mean, the, my mother is a, a nuclear physicist. Uh, participate in Manhattan Project. Irvin arrived in China first. Hinton joined him in the country and later became his wife. In the U.S., she was working under a scholarship from the U.S. Navy, but she quit, knowing her work would be used in the war, and decided instead to dedicate the rest of her life to modernizing agricultural in China. The couple got married in 1949 in Yan'an, born and raised in China. Fred says he's had a mixed feelings about his identity. My name is Fred Angst. Um, I was born and raised in China, I was born in Beijing, in fact. Um, but I was not raised in Beijing, I was raised in the ancient capital city of Xi'an. Um, I spent half my life in China, half my life in the U.S. He has a Chinese name. Yang Heping, named by Madame Song Qingling, the wife of Sun Yat-sen. He says he was viewed as an American in China, but adding to the confusion, he was later perceived as a foreigner with an accent when first arriving in the U.S., as he struggled to overcome culture shock. Uh, people in the U.S. Are saying, I'm being brainwashed, I'm being duped, and I'm, I'm self-doubting, and I was trying to want to make sure well, what, what is really going on. During his 30-some years in the U.S., he tried to figure out who he was, and he finally wrapped his head around his early years spent in China. So I went, decided to go to college and trying to learn economics and understand the Chinese socialist economics, and, and that didn't help. And I went to graduate school, and uh, that didn't really help either. Uh, what really helped is uh, what we saw in the 90s, what happened in China, and then the uh, U.S. is still an imperialist country and it didn't change. His dad passed away in 2003. He wanted to come back to witness the drastic changes of modern China while his mom was still alive. It took me many years. Finally, I crawled myself back to the pits and um, found my, um, my bearings eventually. <laughs> He came back to China for good in 2007, while his younger brother Biu and sister Karen stay in the U.S. He's now a professor teaching at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing. Living in the country once again, he says his heart has a closer connection to his childhood home. Sun Ziyuan, CGTN, Beijing.